taxes than any other 4G network. New York Life Insurance Company and Quiznos. For over a decade, Boise State has dominated Fresno State on the football field. So what's the mentality tonight for the Bulldogs? For that, we check in with Allison Williams. And Carter, as you and Danny pointed out, there's no denying the implications of this game for Fresno State. Coaches have acknowledged that, and they told their players, tone it out. Coach DeRuiter made that point symbolically Sunday night by handing out these earplugs, telling them to block out the noise. He feels like they've done a good job of doing that this week, but admits he won't really know until they kick off and he can look in their eyes and gauge their mentality. He said the big thing tonight, they cannot let their minds, their emotions beat them. They've got to make Boise do that. Some of our listeners, viewers, would like some of those earplugs tonight. But <laughs> Fresno State is 8 0 at home under Tim DeRuiter in his second year as the Bulldog head coach. On Friday night at a sold out Bulldog Stadium, a big one in the Mountain West Conference with BCS at large implications. Boise State versus Fresno State. <laughs> Dallas Burroughs will bring it out of the end zone. Dropped at the 13-yard line. Jonathan Norton makes the special teams tackle, which means we see the Boise State offense first. And Joe Southwick, the fifth-year senior from Danville, California, told us this week it was an honor to back up the Bronco great Kellen Moore for two years. Well, last week, Joe Southwick, 27 of 29 passing against Air Force to set a new Boise State record for passing efficiency, surpassing Kellen Moore and Jared Zabransky. Southwick quick hitter complete to Kirby Moore. Kellen Moore's younger brother, the fifth year senior receiver. Yeah, this Boise State offense last week, we saw them in person, very efficient. Uh, I think we'll see a little bit more explosiveness out of them tonight with some deep passes because Fresno State is not gonna sit back and let Joe Southwick take all those short passes. Out of the pistol, Jay Ajayi, the sophomore. Tackled by Andy Jennings. Jay Ajayi, another guy last week that we, we saw was very impressive. Four touchdowns on the ground. Was really impressed with the physical nature of his run game. Ajayi takes it again on first and ten. Strung out and dropped for a loss. Deron Smith leads the way. Mom's happy we got Deron right. <laughs> That's we right. talked to him yesterday. He says, you know, I don't really care, but my mom... Duran, that's an hey, extra game. Here. If you're going to be on national TV, you might as well get it right. Duran Smith now a junior turned down offers from programs including Nebraska to come here and play for the Bulldogs. <laughs> Southwick complete to Boldevine. Gets back to the 30, a chance to look at our impact players, brought to you by Longhorn Steakhouse. Jay Ajayi, we just told you about his threat in the running game. Then Matt Miller, he's a guy, he's going to catch a lot of balls from Southwick, had 10 last weekend. And then defensively, Deron Smith, the guy we just talked about, the safety position, he covers a lot of ground, covering that center field type position for Fresno State secondary. Opening drive, third and five. Shane Williams Rhodes is dropped as soon as he touches the football. LJ Jones, the corner, makes the stop to force fourth down. Just a simple swing pass out to their big back, but LJ Jones, number six, you saw him fight off a blocker with a big stop early for Fresno State. The Bulldogs have been terrific on special teams, including in the return game, where Isaiah Burse, two touchdowns last week against Cal Poly. He is the FBS leader in total all-purpose yards. Sean Whale to punt for Boise State. And good opening field position near the 40 for Fresno State. And Derek Carr, the 50-year senior quarterback, 
It has already been a very emotional year for Derek Carr. Six weeks ago, Derek's wife, Heather, gave birth to their son, Dallas. There have been some complications with Dallas's intestines that have required three surgeries. So Derek Carr spent most evenings after training camp in the neonatal intensive care unit. We are happy to tell you Dallas has apparently passed the issue. Doctors tell Derek and Heather he should have no lingering consequences. He's ready to cheer for daddy tonight, too. Kazada flagged down. Derek Carr said he would literally be sitting in the neonatal ICU unit watching game film, getting ready for the first game against Rutgers while holding his son Dallas. Pretty cool. Tell him, you know, he's telling him coverages, what to look Personal for. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense in the First down. And so there is a healthy Dallas Carr who is continuing the family tradition of watching uh, game film at a very early age. Carter, it'll be something to watch for to see if Fresno State tries to establish a ground game, a rush attack, because Boise State First three games of this season, they have really struggled to stop the run. Opening drive, great field position to begin for the Bulldogs. Carr, quick hitter, is batted down. Intended for burst. Ricky Chongachu, the nose tackle, knocks it down. Both teams will go hurry up, which means the defenses will sub a lot when they can. I think Fresno State goes a little bit more of a frenetic pace. They like to really push the limits as far as tempo. Completes on third and seven, Devontae Adams. A chance to look at the in-back players on this side of the ball, brought to you by Longhorn Steakhouse. Well, we've talked a lot about Derek Carr and his ability to throw the ball. He's got some outstanding weapons, Devontae Adams and Isaiah Burst on the outside. They're about as good a duo as you'll find in the country. And then Demarcus Lawrence for Boise State, he's the guy that's gonna have to pressure Carr tonight. Pizzotta slips a tackle. How important is it for Fresno State to get that run game going? I think it'll be key. I mean, I don't think they'll worry about it if it comes they'll, they'll they'll try to work it in their game plan but they like to throw it a lot car hurry up miss that one over through greg watson oh uh, fresno state i know Derek carr would love to have that throw back just a little bit overthrown but he had his receiver streaking down right up the hash marks for a touchdown on third and two Carr completes. Nice grab. Right back to Greg Watson, who makes the catch. The Derek Carr is getting some notice from some NFL scouts, and I think it's throws like this in a really tight window on a third down. He's able to rifle it into a tight window. Earlier on this drive, he had a nice throw to the outside, too. You can really see the ball come off with some good velocity. Red zone on the opening drive for the Bulldogs. Carr overthrows Josh Harper. Trying to get Boise State on a double move to the outside, just a slant and go. You saw Derek Carr pump fake. Really wasn't there. Pretty good job by Boise State staying back defensively, not biting on that first pump fake. Empty backfield. Diamond formation with four wide receivers at the bottom. Carr on the draw. Wrestled down by Jerry Iowane, the junior safety from Honolulu. A lot of times you see these funky formations. You saw at the diamond formation, four wide receivers out to the outside. A lot of times it's just window dressing. Just get Boise State a little bit distracted and then try to sneak a little quarterback draw in there. Boise did a pretty good job staying home. So nine for 12 touchdowns in the red zone for Fresno State. Screen. Slipping away from the defense and into the end zone. A Boise State touchdown. Josh Kazada.
Fresno State head coach Tim DeRuder says, we would love to get off to a fast start for a lot of reasons, but Fresno State has been behind Boise State, not just losing games, but behind almost the entire stretch of the seven game losing streak. Tim DeRuder said, we want to get off to a hot start. Here it is. Fresno State with a great play call in a third long situation. You call a screen versus the blitz. Perfectly, perfectly executed by Fresno. They've got the lead the first time in a long time. A sellout crowd for the first time in five years, and they see Fresno State go on an opening touchdown drive. We listened in to Fresno State head coach Tim DeRuder. Get his team ready for kickoff, and we will listen into the locker room pregame here in just a moment. While we recorded from Tim DeRuder's pregame speech, Colin McGuire kicks off to Dallas Burroughs. Touchback. Here's Tim DeRuder. It's going to be tough. They're a good team, but you know what? There's a better team in this locker room. Those we, we, we hang together. You trust each other. You love each other. And right now, we're going to go eat together. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I don't know about you, Carter, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> that was. He's a. He's got a lot of energy, a lot of passion. It was fun getting to talk to Coach Tim DeRuder yesterday. You can see he's got something special going on. And you don't even have to say that much in a game like this because of what's at stake for Fresno State. But I'll tell you what, those guys are ready to run through a wall for him. Second possession for Boise State. This is Baltazar, the true freshman, dropped by Kyrie Wilson. And for Chris Peterson, 10 plus wins every season at Boise State. Now in his eighth season, with last week's Mountain West opening win over Air Force, now 86 and 9. Williams Rhodes makes the catch, but he is met as soon as he grabs it by Charles Washington. Fresno State saw the same game we did last week, where, you know, Southwick was highly efficient, but he threw a lot of underneath passes close to the line of scrimmage. Fresno State is all over the short passes early. Boise's going to have to work the ball down the field to try to free up some room for their receivers. Late substitution for the Broncos before third down. Timeout, Boise State. Hot start on a hot night for Fresno State against the Broncos. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Lexus. Introducing a car designed with one purpose, to stand apart. The all-new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. And iShares by BlackRock. Visit iShares.com to learn more. Here in the San Joaquin Valley, this is the poultry program on campus here at Fresno State. So if you wonder why there's the V everywhere around Fresno State, including on the helmets, that's the V for the Valley, the agriculturally rich San Joaquin Valley. This is third down, third down and 11. Southwick incomplete. Intended for Matt Miller, L.J. Jones in coverage, and a tough start for Boise State's offense. And L.J. Jones, number six for Fresno State. That's the second big play he's made on third down. He had a big tackle the last drive, and that one, really solid pass coverage on Matt Miller. Boise State, for the all three games, they've started off a little bit slow offensively in all their three games so far this season. Sean Whale punting tonight for Boise State. Trying to keep it away from Isaiah Burse. Picks it up on the hop. Burse wrestled down back near the 35-yard line. It looked a little risky, but I think he saved him about 15 yards of field position there by fielding that punt. Take a look at how Boise State never stops improving. Brought well, to you by Lowe's. Well, this is the area they need to improve on, too. It's, it's versus the run. I, at Washington, they taste Bishop Sankey, who I think is going to give a lot of people fits. Then even versus... You know, UT Martin, they struggled. And then Air Force, which traditionally is a really strong running team, they struggled as well. So they're going to have to correct some issues. 
a lot of this has to do with the youth on Boise State. They've got a lot of guys. This is their first time playing collegiate football, period. Five true freshmen on the defensive 2 deep. The power eye formation among the receivers at the bottom of the screen. Restacked. Derek Carr hands off. Kazada. You mentioned that opener yeah, between Boise yeah. State and Washington. That was fast break football. 173 total snaps in that game <laughs> in Seattle. And Boise State ends up giving up 592 to Washington. Seen a lot of big numbers put up against some pretty good teams this year. Second and seven, Kazada drop. I think a lot of people were down on Boise State after that loss for their performance, but I think what people are going to see is Washington is a really good team. Plus, you got to remember, they were opening up a renovated stadium. The crowd was, you know, really amped up, and that was a really hostile environment for them to go into. Car dumps incomplete. So a third down stop for the first time by Boise State. The screen worked down in the red zone on the third down and 10, so they tried to go back to the same play call. That time, though, Boise State dropping into coverage. They didn't bring the blitz. They were able to recognize that much better. So a three and out after the opening drive touchdown. Offensive coordinator Dave Schramm there with Derek Carr. Shane Williams rhodes back to receive the punt from Garrett Swanson. Down right around the 25-yard line. So a slow start for Joe Southwick and the Boise State offense. Can the magic of the mustache propel Southwick and the Broncos on the next drive? Well, for years and years, when you came to Fresno, California, and you talked about facial hair, it was all about the Fu Manchu, the uh, former head coach, Pat Hill, who had a terrific run here as head coach at Fresno State. Now with Boise State here, it's Joe Southwick, who is undefeated with the mustache. He didn't have it in the opener in Washington. He grew it out after they lost last year at San Diego State. Gotta, you gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. Gotta be superstitious, whatever works. Right now, Boise State has to stretch the field vertically. They need to try some deep balls. Ajayi on first down for just a couple against an aggressive Fresno State defense. Fresno State has been playing the wide receivers very aggressively on the outside. Playing very close to the line of scrimmage. They're coming up. They're breaking fast on every ball that Joe Southwick throws. to the ground game nothing there for a Jai third down coming Wilson and Ettering combine on the tackle Fresno State playing with a lot of confidence on both sides of the football especially defensively Look at these matchups right here they're very aggressive Southwick completes to Matt Miller for a first down. That's what you have to do if you're Boise State, if you're Joe Southwick. Under some pressure, they brought the blitz. The two guys I circled actually did come on a blitz. Southwick able to step up, avoid the pressure, and delivered a nice strike. Broncos try and go hurry up. Please reset the game clock to 25 seconds. First down. I don't think they would have needed a lot, a lot of amount of time. They were ready to go. And I think that's what Coach Peterson is saying. This is a classic uh, Chip Kelly argument from the <laughs> former Oregon offensive coordinator Chris Peterson about we don't care about the play clock. <laughs> don't stop our tempo. Inside a hand again to Ajayi. And again, the Bulldogs are ready, led by Carl Mickelson. Carl Mickelson, number 43, with the hair coming flowing out of the helmet. We saw him on film. Not only did he jump out because of the hair, but because he, he can fly around the field. He makes a lot of plays for Fresno State defensively. Nick Tobin and the staff rave about the spirit of Carl Mickelson on and off the field. Play fake. 
Everyone covered downfield. There is a flag down as Southwick goes scrambling to the 50. Flag in the backfield. Personal foul. Hands to the face on the defense from the 92. 15 yard penalty. First down. Tyler Davison, the nose guard. Tyler Davison, watch him right in the middle of your screen. Right there it is, <laughs> right up underneath the helmet. Marcus Henry, number 72. Pretty easy call for the officials to see there. That's Boise State's biggest offensive play, a 15-yard penalty. Now off play action, the shot to the tight end, Connor Peters, inside the 15. We talked about Chip Kelly and how him and Coach Peterson used to work together. That looked like a play that the Eagles have been running lately. Working that tight end down the middle field. How about this formation? After the 25-yard gain, back to Ajayi. Still nothing doing in the run game. Davis Another the stop. formation that we saw the Eagles run. <laughs> they had some success in that first game of the NFL season on Monday Night Football. And hey, it's a copycat league. You see guys doing stuff around the league. It looks like fun. Look like it looks like it could work. They'll put it out in the game plan. Maybe we should see some Andy Reid plays. <laughs> yeah. Southwick scrambling again. Dances out, took a hit, there's yeah. the flag. That was pretty easy call for the officials right there. Southwick was headed out of bounds. Number 27 for Fresno State, Donovan Lewis. You saw him come up. And it was a pretty easy call. I know the crowd is booing. But at the end of that run, Southwick clearly going out of bounds. And Donovan Lewis might not look that bad, but that little love tap right there, it's going to get you a penalty every time. First and goal, Boise State. Ajayi in the pistol behind Southwick. Not much for Southwick. It'll be second and goal. Wasn't real crazy about that play call, running the option down the line with Southwick. It is an area of his game that he's improved on, but I feel like he's a better runner when he drops back to pass and things open up in the middle of the field, not running the option. Here he is again, stretching, marked down just shy. Third and goal for the Broncos. Obviously, Chris Peterson feels differently about Southwick's running ability, going back-to-back -back runs with him. That was a good spot by the officials. It did look like he came up short. Tight end Peters has to come out because his helmet came off. Substitution prior to third and goal. In front of the sellout crowd at Bulldog Stadium. Second call timeout by Boise State on offense in the first quarter. Joe Southwick and the Broncos have third and goal coming. When we come back to Fresno. The 11th play of the Boise State drive is third down and goal from the Fresno State one. I like Southwick a lot, but I think you got to give it to your workhorse, Ajayi, in the backfield. Ajayi gets it into the end zone. Touchdown, Boise State. Good physical run up inside, just running the dive. Southwick gives it up the middle. And Ajayi, after four touchdowns last week, off to a solid start tonight. He is a physical back, tough to bring down. Dan Goodale's PAT ties it 7 all. 4.02 to go in the first. Boise State finally gets the offense rolling. Jay Ajayi into the end zone. Buster's happy. Oh. 
Jay Ajayi's touchdown puts Boise State on the board. 7-7 between the Broncos and the Bulldogs. You notice anything different about that Powerade yes, bottle there? I do. <laughs> and for those who have been taking note of the Sports Center, not top 10 moment from Jay Ajayi <laughs> last week in Boise State. Danny Cannell is going to give you some expert telestration to explain just why. What oh, I am. I didn't know that. After Jay Ajayi from last week to this week after the kick. Dylan Root, dangerous return man for Fresno State, brings it out. Root. Wrestle down around the 21 yard line. So last week, pickle juice in the jar with the pickles for Jay Ajayi. But there has been a change <laughs> this week for Mr. Ajayi. There is. They said he wasn't going to drink it straight out of the jar. Maybe it was the pickles. They didn't want him to eat too much tonight. Notice anything different? See these two lines right there? That's a special bottle. Now, I'm just assuming if you had four touchdowns last week <laughs> drinking the pickle juice, just like Southwick has the stash, I mean, hey, if it's working, why would you stop? And you think maybe that uh, staff member on the Boise State sideline <laughs> is pointing out that he's on TV again? <laughs> the pickle juice is coming back into play? Here's Derek Carr, just incomplete, off the hands of Devontae Adams. Some energy drink company, you know, a sports drink company, has to come up with the pickle juice flavor mm. or, <laughs> or the actual thing. All I know is I would not want to accidentally pick up that water bottle. Play fake. Here's Greg Watson slipping a tackle. Watson across the 30. The converted quarterback who had the game-winning touchdown grab at OT versus Rutgers in the opener. Pump. Deep shot. Wide open, Watson. Stiff arm and Watson finally forced out. Touchdown is the call. Touchdown is the call. Watson into the end zone. Beautiful play call. The end of the run there. You see Sean Watson, Greg Watson, excuse me, knee down right there. It's going to be really tight. Looks like his knee might have been down about the half yard line, and the ball had not crossed the plane yet. What a beautiful play call, though, by Dave Schramm, the offensive coordinator for Fresno State. So our replay officials, Jim Blackwood and Dee Anderson, will take a look. What a great individual effort by Greg Watson. Not only at the end there trying to stretch for the end zone, but the stiff arm that you saw, Carter, at about the 30. This looks really tough. The knee goes down at about the one and a quarter yard line. The question is, where is the ball at that point? This is probably the best angle. You see the knee down. The runner's knee hit the ground and the ball was at the half yard line before he broke the plane of the goal line. Therefore, the ball was at the half yard line. Go straight on. Pretty clear explanation from Scott Novak. They saw the clear picture. The replay officials always tell us they're looking for. They want a clear picture. Robook says they have to be convinced beyond all doubt to overturn it. Here's Watson. Watch him sneak out a little wheel route, and they're going to try to set up a bubble screen right there. Carr just pump fakes out to the bubble, and the Watson just springs free right behind the Boise State defense. That stiff arm right there. Great effort, and then trying to dive for the end zone. Unfortunately, for Fresno State comes up just a hair short. So hurry up for first and goal for the Bulldogs. Meisenheimer is wow. stood up and driven back. Kyrie Marshall leads the charge. What a collision there at the point of attack. Ricky Chongachu, number 43 for Boise State. That is a big man right there, 6'3", 300 pounds. What a collision. Again, Marshall, the fifth-year seniors. 
The stop to make it second and goal. Play fake. Incomplete. A drop at the goal line. Dropped by Patrick Sua, the fullback. Patrick Sua was wide open. He was the outlet for Derek Carr. Derek Carr looked to the end zone. It wasn't there, and he went to his check down, and Sua was not ready for that football. Sua is a linebacker who only plays fullback in goal line situations. And that was definitely an instance there where you could tell a little bit of his inexperience showing on that play. Third and goal. Intended for Watson again. Chong and Chu applies the pressure. A miscommunication between Carr and his receiver Watson, just not it on the same page. Goal. And this is an area of the field where the teams that like to throw it a lot, they really struggle. Goal line situations. You saw them get blown up on the first run attempt, then a couple of passes firing, you know, not on the same page. And it's always kind of that's the negative aspect of running an offense where you're predominantly from the shotgun throwing it around. Colin McGuire field goal is good from 20. So the touchdown that is overturned costs Fresno State points, but the Bulldogs take the lead. Undefeated SEC rivals. It is Auburn and LSU Saturday, 745 Eastern on ESPN, presented by Hampton. Are you surprised at how much better Zach Mettenberger is in 2013? No. <laughs> Camp Cameron, his new I... offensive coordinator, is a quarterback guru. Really liked what he did with him in the spring practice, even letting him call the plays exclusively during that game. And they have a much more formidable pass attack there in Baton Rouge. Bobbled in the end zone by Burroughs. So a 10-7 start for Fresno State on Boise State. We talked about how Tim DeRuiter said really important for them to get out to a good early start. That's mission accomplished. How worried should Boise State be right now? It's a three-point game. I think I referenced it earlier that they had started all three of their games a little bit sluggish. I mean, Washington, they never were able to get back on track. Even against UT Martin, they started slow, were really caught fire second quarter and on. And then when we saw them last week against Air Force, you know, it was it was a very competitive game early. They were struggling on defense. I think this is a veteran team with a veteran quarterback. I don't think there's any sense of panic in them whatsoever. They're thinking, hey, we'll get this thing figured out. Joe Southwick looking long for Matt Miller, underthrown, incomplete. LJ Jones in coverage. And that's what we talked about Boise State needing to do was stretching the field, pushing it vertically. Southwick under a little bit of duress, thought maybe he could have gotten a little bit more weight behind that throw and led Miller, because that was a touchdown down the field if he was able to lead his receiver on the outside. Southwick, wide open, Boldevine down the sideline. Geraldo Boldevine wrestled down at the 15. But well, we just saw Fresno State run a little fake bubble screen. Watch the action up at the top. A little fake bubble screen. And the guy who you think is going to block fakes the block and then just goes vertical. So both teams, I mean, it's a sucker play. You're saying, hey, you show the bubble screen a lot in your offense. You try to get them to bite. And both teams defensively bit hard on that fake to the outside. 57-yard pickup. Southwick, complete, incomplete. Miller nearly hauled it in at the five. L.J. Jones in coverage again. Yeah, again, L.J. Jones, number six for Fresno State, who his defensive coordinator, Nick Toth, said he's a fighter. And so far tonight, what I've seen him too is I would verify that statement. He's, he's a guy who's going to battle on the outside. Really solid coverage on that route down the field. This is Grant Hendrick in a quarterback for Boise State. Handing off to Rajai inside the 15 for third down. And Grant Hendrick's a guy that Boise State will run. They have a package for him. He's a little bit more athletic than Joe Southwick. They have definitely some plays like the one we just saw. 
I think it's tough for Southwick. You go to the sideline, then you've got to come back into the mix on a very crucial third down situation. To the end zone on third and five. Incomplete. Intended for Shane Williams Rhodes. Field goal unit comes on for Boise State. Pretty good defense, defensive stand there for Fresno State. Southwick trying to take a shot to the corner of the end zone, but it was well covered. Dan Goodale, two for three, had a block in the Washington game. 31-yard attempt is good. And Boise State ties it at 10. Minute 18 to go in the first quarter. See Chris Peterson having a little conversation with Joe Southwick. And I, I think the luxury of both of these coaches, they have a fifth-year quarterback on the field, and it's always an advantage to have a quarterback who kind of knows how to communicate with you, tell you what you saw on the last drive, you know, get that feedback to your coach. It always helps a play caller. I talked about Joe Southwick kind of being in the shadow of Kellen Moore who started before him. Then Derek Carr, an older brother David, who was a big star here, number one pick. There's David. And this video was taken by David right. Carr on top of his house. Derek, over the house, swish. <laughs> I love the celebration from David right there. Boom. A blind shot over the house, over the pool. And that was Pretty big brother impressive. Darren down there as well. So, yeah, the uh, Carr football family. And Derek says, no question, he wants to be mentioned as the greatest bulldog of all time, which is uh, generally the position that David Carr is thought to hold. Shane Williams Rhodes to around the 35. Let's check in with Allison. Well, guys, when the Fresno State offense was on the field, one thing they were talking about taking advantage of is some of the coverages they're seeing from Boise State, especially when Boise is in man free. They feel like the corners are giving their receivers some room. They like that matchup. Now it's time for David Carr to go out there, Derek Carr to go out there and take advantage of it. That's Dylan Root on the return for Fresno State. To the 36. Incomplete. Harper didn't secure it. So nice. Car Car now just five at 13. Yeah. Couple drops on the outside, couple missed shots. Back to the ground game, Kazada. And their type of offense, too, he could get streaky, complete five or six in a row, and his completion percentage is right back up there. To the 41. Hurry up for third and five. Play action. Carr heaving long. And incomplete. Intended for Devontae Adams. That ball was a long way in the air. I think David Carr right there is even impressed by that throw. But unfortunately, not complete. But you see Carr. And it lands at 62, 63 yards in the air by my math. Just a little flick of the wrist from Derek Carr. I don't think anyone has any questions about his arm strength. I think he would have rather thrown that maybe 45 or 50 if he would have completed it, though. Here's Shane Williams Rhodes. Fair catch at the 15. That's the thing. It doesn't matter how far you can throw it. You got to be able to hit what you're throwing at. Todd McShay's report on Derek Carr. Yeah, he's got him as a third rounder, uh, which I think Derek Carr is a guy who he might be a third rounder now when you see him on the field, what he's capable of doing from a physical standpoint, but he's a guy who's going to test an interview 
off the charts because he's impressive. He's got the size. He's added some muscle to his frame. And then just sitting down and talking football with him like we got to do yesterday, very impressive. He's a gym rat. He's a guy who's constantly watching film. And NFL scouts and GMs love those types of players. Baltas <laughs> are fighting for a few. And then, you know, NFL scouts, you know what else they like? They like maturity. And one of McShay's notes was married. And that's that's a big sign of maturity for some, you know, young guys coming out. Sign of a guy being able to settle down and having stability in the house. And that's a great asset. And even Derek Carr talked to us about how much his wife meant to him and his mature maturation process and what she means to him, kind of keeping his faith and focus on football. And now he'll try and get a win on the football field. 10-10 at the end of one. Celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship monies. Second quarter begins with second down for Boise State. The true freshman running back, Baltazar, from Chula Vista, California. Not much there. Carl Mickelson on the stop. It's third down. Fresno State having trouble lining up. Timeout, Fresno State. First charge in the first half. Now Boise State and Fresno State. And San Diego State tied for the Mountain West Conference Championship a year ago. Hashtag Friday Focus on Twitter. College came day from Fargo, North Dakota. Now you may know that North Dakota State has won the last two FCS titles. They won Division II titles going all the way back to 1965. And on game day, built by the Home Depot, 9 a.m. Eastern, Chris Fowler's conversation with Mac Brown, honoring Nick Pasquale as well, and Teddy Bridgewater, and for mom. Tom Rose, Rose Murphy, all that on game day tomorrow from Fargo. Third down, Southwick completes to Kirby Moore to convert. Uh, nice, good decision by Southwick. Fresno State brought the blitz, found the receiver with off coverage, delivered a quick pass, got it out of the pocket for the first down by Southwick. Take the handoff back to Kirby Moore. Charles Washington again on the stop. Yeah, Fresno State, they got burned once when they, you know, they faked the bubble screen, the short pass and went over to the top, but Fresno State not phased by that. They're still very aggressive in pursuit of the football, coming up and making great tackles in the open field. Southwick incomplete. Kirby Moore in heavy traffic. Same blitz and the same intended receiver by Southwick. On that one, just waited a hair longer on Kirby Moore in a really tight window. Three Fresno State red jerseys right around that football. Complete back to Kirby Moore. Heavy traffic again, and the fifth-year senior from Prosser makes the grab. I don't think Kirby Moore was ready for that football. He turned his head around. Great anticipation from Southwick. And it kind of caught Moore by surprise, but great reaction, great hands, catching it, out extended arms. 
securing the first down. Right on top of the Bulldog. Play fake. Why not go right back to Kirby Moore? This time to the 30. On the perimeter, Fresno State very aggressive on the outside, pressing the receivers, but in the middle of the field is where they're getting off coverage, and Joe Southwick exposing the middle of this Fresno State defense. Nick Toth is going to have to make an adjustment quick. Well-deserved break for Kirby Moore after four catches for 49. Play fake. Southwick chased. Throws it away for second down. Kyrie Wilson leading the pressure on Joe Southway. Kirby Moore is coming back in for second down. I'm Fresno State. I think there's got to be an alert. Hey, make sure you know where this guy is on this throw. That slot, he's been dangerous. There he is. Play action. Oh, it tipped. Almost intercepted, intended for Boldevine. See, now, I think that Southwick had Kirby Moore again. He could have gone to the well one more time. Instead, passed over it in a much tighter window. Sometimes you almost fool yourself. You talk yourself out of it, saying, as a quarterback, hey, it can't be there again, can it? So you pass it over. Sometimes you've got to stick with that primary receiver the first time. Make him cover it. Third down again for Southwick. Four for six so far. Before the snap, timeout Fresno State. Timeout Fresno State. Third and ten for the Broncos when we come back to Fresno. You know when the milk can is on the line, you throw the records out. Boise State and Fresno State play for the milk can. Personal for Tim DeRuiter, who comes from a dairy farming family. In fact, his cousin Nick DeRuiter has a dairy outside Boise and is a huge Bronco fan. So pride and the milk can and more on the line with these two. Third and ten for Boise State. Southwick pressured and sacked. Jonathan Norton, the senior who earned a scholarship this summer, played his way into a nickel roll on the Fresno State defense, gets the sack. Jonathan Norton, you see him from the very tail end of your screen, came from pretty far in a nickel position, and Southwick has got to recognize that and get rid of the football. Fourth and 16. The pooch. Look for the pooch. Or the play action scramble and sack at the 41 yard line. Boise State goes for it on fourth down and 16. And Southwick is sacked by Ettering. I'm a little bit perplexed right now as to why Chris Peterson chose that play call right there. And you see the conversation with Southwick. I mean, maybe there was something they were looking for that, hey, if we see it, we'll take it. If not, maybe we'll call timeout. Maybe we'll pooch punt it, something. But I understand they're in no man's territory because they're in that really dicey position where you don't want to send your punt team out there and yet you can't do your field goal team. But to give up a sack there and give Fresno State outstanding field position, just a little bit perplexing right now. So the Bulldogs begin at their own 38. Instead of perhaps backed up inside the 20 or even inside the 10. Call completes Isaiah Burse. To the 21 yard line. What a quick release from Derek Carr. 41 yard pickup, and now Carr hurries him to the line. to the end zone. Touchdown, Fresno State. Josh Harper holds it in.
two plays, 62 yards, and the Bulldogs take advantage of the field position in a hurry. There's his offensive coordinator, Dave Schramm, having a conversation, and here is the catch from Josh Harper, who just basically goes up, takes it away, I mean, that is well defended by Page, number three. You saw the Boise State defender, he's right there, he's got a hand in there, what a great job by Josh Harper, just physically going and getting the football. Colin McGuire's PAT gives Fresno State a touchdown lead. Boise State goes for it on fourth down, giving the football to Fresno State at their own 38, and Derek Carr and the Bulldogs celebrate in a hurry. Fresno State back on top. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind, and the Volkswagen Passat. That's the power of German engineering. Here in the luscious San Joaquin Valley, those grapes are for eating, although they also produce their own wine here on campus at Fresno State. Derek Carr, a two-play, 62-yard touchdown drive for Fresno State to put the Bulldogs back on top in this Mountain West Conference matchup. Boise State now in its third year in the Mountain West. Fresno State in its second. The former WAC rivals. Boise State has dominated, winning 11 of 12. Colin McGuire's kickoff taken by Dallas Burroughs inside the tent. Burroughs has room. Dallas Burroughs shakes his way all the way inside the Bulldog 40. We saw the quick strike play making of Fresno State offensively. About the first play, that's Isaiah Burst lined up behind Devontae Evans. They do that stack formation so he can get a free release, and he runs totally free down the middle of the field. Then you got right here, you got Josh Harper on the outside versus press. What you want to do to him is run him deep, and this is an outstanding throw by Derek Carr and an even better effort on the outside of Josh Harper going up and getting that ball. Boise State football, Joe Southwick on the read option for four yards after Southwick is down on the field at the 35. He waved off the trainers from the field saying, hey, I'm fine. He's trying to well, we've suck the, it up. Now we've seen the backup Grant Hendrick come in for one play. Boise State not afraid to play Hendrick, who's a junior. But it's Southwick still in there for second and seven. Throw the screen outside to Kirby Moore. Stretching close to the first down. Here's a look at the end of the play where Southwick trying to get a couple extra yards. What he's, I can't really tell what he's grabbing there, but obviously something affected him. But it didn't look like it effect, affected that last throw. I think it's his arm. He's, he's stretching, throwing his arm almost like he's trying to keep his arm loose. Moore does get the first down. Here's a toss, throw it right back to Southwick. And now Southwick, after making the catch, is forced out of bounds by Kyrie Wilson. And Southwick is slow getting up again. I think it's a, I think it's something in his shoulder. You can tell the way he's holding that right shoulder. That's his throwing arm. And now they're gonna go ahead and go with. Grant Hedrick, the backup, and here's a, a tackle that I felt like was out of bounds, but I think the easily an official could have thrown a flag on that one. I don't know if it was quite necessary for the defender to bring him all the way to the ground when he was two yards out of bounds. I'm always going to look out for quarterback. That's Absolutely. <laughs> and now it's Grant Hendrick handing off on second down. So Hendrick, the junior, Chris Peterson says one way or another, we're gonna get Grant Hendrick into the football game every week. Yeah, Southwick was ready to go back in and they're saying, hey, hold on. <laughs> There's Peterson kind of laughing, saying, hey, we've got a package for Hendrick. Let's see what we can do with it.
First down, Boise State. I think that's, that is the package for Grant Hedrick. More pistol formation, more, you know, kind of zone read option where he can stick it in the belly of Ajayi and potentially run it himself. I'm sure they have a couple play action passes in there too off that action. Play fake. Touchdown. Just as you called it, Danny, Troy Ware makes the touchdown grab. Grant Hendrick into the end zone for an 18-yard touchdown. He called the play action. Boise State going for two. Didn't get there. Matt Miller took the snap. Going for two. And Carl Mickelson makes the stop to preserve a one-point lead for Fresno State. Broncos go for two. Mickelson denies him. Bulldogs hang on to the lead. Welcome back to Fresno. The Bulldogs holding on to a one-point lead over the Broncos, and I'm joined by someone who knows this rivalry very well, David Carr, the older brother of Derek Carr, tonight's quarterback, former number one pick out of Fresno State. For you and Derek growing up, how much was football a part of your relationship? He said when he was younger you would pour the football knowledge on him. Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of just something that he gravitated towards. He would just sit down, see me watching film, breaking film down at my house, or he'd always jump in the car with me, want to go, because we were close by when we were in Houston, he lived out there. So he'd, he'd jump in the car with me, we'd go break down film, and he just always had a passion for it and enjoyed it. So I kind of just tried to help him out as much as possible, and he naturally gravitated towards it. When did you realize he had the potential to follow in your footsteps? Probably when he was out throwing us when I was here in Fresno and he would come down on the field when he was 12 and he would just light it up. We'd do quarterback drills and Jeff Tedford was the offensive coordinator at the time. He would let Derek participate mm -hmm. and a lot of times he would out throw some of the quarterbacks around the field and uh, we kind of knew at that time that he would have a natural ability to do it. It was just going to be a matter of experience and, and kind of things that come after that. For people at home that know your history here and the game against Boise State, how difficult of a loss that was in 2001. And then Derek said at one point you put a Boise State flag up in his apartment and said it wasn't coming down until a car beat them. Give me a sense of what this rivalry means, not just to Fresno State, but to the Carr family. Yeah, it's always been a part of it. I mean, because he was, you know, think about how old he was. It was part of his childhood. He was at that game. You know, he was at the game when we lost to Boise. You know, and uh, it's a, a little bit of a memory for him. So that was kind of the, the thing that when he came here, it wasn't that he was trying to come, you know, do something that uh, that I did or try and replace what I did. He was trying to finish something that I that, I, that we and Pat Hill started and, and the group that was with me. And uh, he's done a great job so far, and he's got a chance to do it tonight. One last shot here tonight, David. Thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. No problem. Guys. Here is Derek Carr and the Bulldogs on second down and seven. Good open field tackle by Dante Dion on Greg Watson, third down. I love watching the chess match unfold between you know, both explosive offenses against you know, two defenses that are both tough in their own right. It's fun watching these guys go at it. Carr over the middle on third and ten, complete to move the chains. Greg Watson secures it. Remember I told you Derek Carr could get hot? I mean, he really looks comfortable now throwing from the pocket, much better feel for the game. A lot of times you just find a rhythm as a quarterback, and right now it feels like Derek Carr is very comfortable right now. There is an injured Boise State player. That's Jeremy Ioane, the safety and big time playmaker in the Boise State secondary, the junior from Ponaho School in Honolulu. Jeremy Ioane now on the Boise State sideline. You saw for a moment there Joe Southwick warming up behind him. Ioane and Southwick both right now on the Boise State sideline. Meanwhile, the last play is under review, the completion to Greg Watson. I think there's a good chance this comes back. Watch Watson as he comes around. You see the ball bobbling, and it still did not look like he had control of it when the ball hit the ground. 
Another look. Does not have control. Still doesn't have control. And then the ball hits the ground and he corrals it into his stomach. I think there's a good chance this comes back as an incomplete pass. Watson had the touchdown grab earlier tonight, had the game winner in OT in the opening win for Fresno State over Rutgers. Here at Bulldog Stadium. After review on the previous play, the ball hit the ground. It'll be an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down and ten on the 11 yard line. Timer, please reset the game clock to eight minutes, 17 seconds. 8.17. Thank you. Called reversed, incomplete. And that's a big overturn right there because Fresno State, now they're having to punt it back to Boise State. It was playing with some, some momentum. But ultimately, the officials did get it right. Fresno State has six drives on three of them they've scored. On the other three, three and outs. And here's Swanson to punt. And he'll hit it right around the goal line. Shane Williams Rhodes. Fair catch all the way back inside the Boise State 40. Saturday Night Football on ABC, you will see either Michigan versus UConn or Kansas State versus Texas. Presented by Windows 8 Eastern, ABC or ESPN3. Big news of the day for Texas, Mac Brown getting good news about David Ash. Coming back. He needs him. Joe Sap Southwick back on the field too, shaking off. Still see him kind of keeping that right arm loose. Ajayi on first down to the 40 with Joe Southwick back in at quarterback. I, I wonder as a play caller if Robert Prince, the offensive coordinator for Boise, is going to change a little bit. I know that one, it looked like he was running the zone read, you know, potentially could keep it, but I would be very concerned about Southwick running the football and taking some unnecessary shots. Ajayi slips out for a moment, gets to the 41 for a gain of a couple, third down. Neither team has, has had much success on the ground. I mean, most of these, both of these offenses have had their success through the air. Pressure coming on third down. Southwick, complete first down. Connor Peters gets to the 50. Both of these quarterbacks, if you give them time, if you if you give them protection and let them get comfortable in the pocket, both of them will pick you apart. That time Southwick had good protection, able to survey the field and delivered a nice pass. Play fake. Southwick has to scramble and goes down quickly. I, now that's a, a run right there where he tried to throw it down the field. But I think you saw him go down a little bit quicker than he would have normally, favoring that shoulder. It's a smart move, too. I mean, I think it's a smart move by Southwick not to take an unnecessary blow. Complete on second and eight to Matt Miller. Coming off a career high 10 catches, 112 yards last week against Air Force. Second catch tonight for Miller. Third down. Last few third downs. Fresno State has opted to bring pressure. Let's see if they do it again. Southwick. Complete. Great grab by Boldevine. Geraldo Boldevine. Well, what a big time throw from Southwick from the far hash all the way across the field and even a better catch from Boldevine. He's a big target out there, 6'4", 220 pounds. Southwick, a nice high ball. So he kind of, it's almost like throwing a post, you know, a ball down low to the center. Just put it where he can catch it. Play fake. Intercepted at the 25. Southwick picked off by Duran Smith. Two 
interceptions this season by Fresno State, both from Deron Smith. And really, for Joe Southwick, just a bad decision and a bad throw. Really, nothing was there on the bootleg. He came out, and you see number 13 right in his passing lane and just throws it right to him. I don't know if it was because his shoulder might be a little bit weaker because he's been dinged. Sometimes you feel like you can get it over that defender, but Deron Smith, the great interception. Just the third INT thrown this year by Southwick. Football goes back to Derek Carr and the Bulldog offense. Quick hitter, Isaiah Burks to the 47. Well, that's kind of the new wrinkle that teams are doing off the zone read action in the backfield, the play action. You see those quick hitting, almost pop passes either to a tight end or a receiver in the slot. Something that I really think Chip Kelly found that we saw on that Monday Night Football and everybody else has seen it and said, hey, we need to try that. 18-yard pickup, Carr to Josh Harper this time, fighting for another Fresno State first down. Josh Harper on the outside, just bail coverage. Nice snaps his route off, and then I like that effort right there. Getting physical. Yeah, just because you play offense doesn't mean you can't deliver some hard hits. This one incomplete intended for Harper. He was out of bounds. This round goes to Brian <laughs> Douglas, the junior corner from L.A. He still caught it, though. He was just out of bounds when he did. Got it again up top if he wants it. Second down, Carr pressure, stepping up, tosses it. That's incomplete, forward pass. It'll be <laughs> third down, but a dangerous decision by Mr. Carr. Trying to just flip it out to the outside. Where was he on the field? Because it looked like he was... <laughs> He was behind the line of scrimmage when he did release it, trying just to flip it outside. <laughs> A little bit crazy pass right there. Lake Lock winding down for third and ten. Carr finds a check down. That's Kazada. Who is surrounded right around the 44. Page leads the way. Now, I remember when Boise State was in about this territory and they went fourth and 16, they went for it because it was kind of in this no man's land. Now you see Fresno, but they have a much better chance of getting this because it's only a fourth and three. Tim DeRuyer says the attitude around Bulldog football is <laughs> high risk, high reward. Fourth and three. Broncos show all-out blitz, back off, complete, burst behind the defense, takes it inside the 20. Deruder's Bulldogs convert on fourth down. Great job by Derek Carr. Just taking the receiver that didn't have a defender on him. What a quick release, too. 223 and counting, passing yards in the first half. Kazada, the BYU transfer. Now just 18 rushing yards in the game for Fresno State. But think, too, about how many quick passes they throw that really supplements their run game. That's really the philosophy for Dave Schramm, the offensive coordinator, to say, hey, those count as runs. Carter Kazada again. Nothing there on second down. Kyrie Marshall, the fifth-year senior on the stop, third down. I like the way Derek Carr just directs a lot of traffic at the line of scrimmage. You see him, he's vocal. And then even after he gets the play call, you'll see him, you know, signal out something to a wide receiver or to a couple guys on the outside. A lot of hand motions, getting guys in position. And it's just a great feel he's got for what defenses are doing, what routes will work. And a rhythm here in the second quarter, 9 for 12. There's another one. See him just... Little late signals, talking to guys, hey, this might work. 
Nearly gotten offside. There's the flag. Free play to the end zone. Incomplete. Big hit. No flag on the hit on Marcel Jensen. Offsides on the defense. And Derek Carr, the reason he threw that ball in the end zone, he knew he had a free play, could take that shot to the end zone. Figured, why not? You see Derek Carr right there. What they use for their snap count is a hand clap. So you typically hear him go clap once. That time, clap twice. Boise State thought they would go on the first clap and got caught. One hand clap, one pump, complete to Adams, inside the five, first and goal, Fresno State. What, a, what an adjustment on that route. Carr didn't have the first window, was patient enough to realize, saw the field that the second window would come open, and here they come, right back at you again. Adams limping, but he's out there for first and goal. TD grabbing 10 straight games. Carr goes to Harper, touchdown, Fresno State. Second touchdown grab of the night for Josh Harper. Third passing touchdown of the first half for Derek Carr. Colin McGuire, the freshman kicker, gets the PAT. Derek Carr, great decision, great route combination on the outside. Watch the receiver right here. He's going to clear out. This guy's going to slip underneath. And Carr delivers a bullet. Fresno State adding to their lead. Tim DeRuiter's Bulldogs go for it on fourth down and three in Boise State territory. And the high risk, high reward former defensive coordinator at Air Force and Texas A&M. He said that time in the Big 12 when the Aggies were in the Big 12 and he was their D.C. under Mike Sherman. Said, I decided if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> so when he became a head coach, said, you know what? We're going to go up tempo. We're going to go all out on offense. We're going to have fun doing it. Fun to watch. Burrows from inside the five. 55-yard return last time for Burroughs, this time with the 21. We check in with Chris. All right, Carter, coming up at the half, Jesse Palmer and Mark May will join us. We'll have a conversation from Gus Malzahn, the head coach at Auburn, as his Tigers prepare to take on LSU. We'll hear from game day there at Fargo, North Dakota, this week with a few upset specials. And also Arian Foster, a little money on the side admission. We'll talk about that as well coming up at the half. Now, when Danny and I talked about Auburn in August, we agreed, dangerous team. And Jai on first and 10. Dancing down the sideline, first down Boise State. Now, that's a tough one at LSU, but you look ahead to November. Georgia at home, then an off week, and then the Iron Bowl versus Alabama. I mean, Auburn's a dangerous team. Maybe tomorrow, but maybe later in the year as well. Hurry up for Boise State. Ajayi now converts. Boise State picking up tempo, two-minute drill. They'd love to put some points on the board before halftime. They'd also like to have at least one of those timeouts that they blew early in this game back. That could become a factor. Please display. reset the game clock. Two minutes, four seconds. Two or four, and it will wind on my signal. It's big. Ten seconds in the two-minute drill is huge for Boise State, especially when they only have one timeout to use in this situation. Southwick completes. Boldevine out of bounds at the 46. Clock stops a minute 55. The era of fast break football. This is where it all started. And with it two helps. Drills. Yeah, and it helps too because you're so used to doing this all the time. It's not really a big deal. Ajayi, hard hit, falls forward to the 49. Lewis and Ettering on the tackle, and as Danny pointed out, Boise State used two timeouts early on offense. Now only one remaining.
Southwick to a dragging Matt Miller. Drop for only two, middle of the field, have to hurry to the line. This is where it hurts you, too, because... You can't, you can't complete these passes. You can't take a risk on a draw inside because you need that clock to stop. So you need to work the outside. If you don't, you lose a lot of time like they did right there. Third and three complete near the first down. Boldevine makes the grab. Chains will move. Clock stops temporarily at a minute four. Now rolling again under a minute. One timeout left for Boise State. Southwick steps up, gets a block from Baltazar, scrambling for another first down, shoved out near the 26. And here's where we point out for years, the Boise State kicking game has been an adventure. Dan Goodell had a kick blocked in the opener against Washington. You didn't have to bring it up. <laughs> I'm not sure they did. So sure Boise State faithful on the thrill with that. <laughs> but nonetheless, there's Southwick with a pretty nice scramble from the pocket. And Fresno State, defensively, they've been aggressive all game. They get in this two-minute drill, and they kind of have been a little bit more conservative. See down here in the red zone if they'll get back to what they were doing, which was bringing more pressures. Here they come. Southwick, incomplete. Off the hands of Troy Ware, who had the touchdown grab. L.J. Jones in coverage again. Still a pretty good throw from Southwick under some pressure. Had the matchup outside. Pretty well defended by Fresno State. The 57th play from scrimmage of the first half for Boise State. Complete. Miller to the 15, first down again, so the clock stops temporarily at 35 seconds, and there's an injured Bulldog on the play, so the officials will stop it at 35. When the ball is ready for play, they will wind it, and the clock will start running again. This is a great, this is basically Boise State is getting a timeout because LJ Jones, number six for Fresno State, is down, so Right now, Southwick, the entire Boise State offense gets to go over, talk to their coaches, come up, devise a plan, probably go over the next two plays. Here's a look at LJ Jones, who came up and did make the tackle. Grabbed his lower back there. Let's see if... Boise State goes after his replacement because L.J. Jones has been spectacular on the outside. Jamal Ellis, number two, the guy in now. See if Boise State tries to go after the new guy. And he's got a club on his hand. I, I would definitely take that shot. That's Jamal Ellis. Throwing that way, complete. Shane Williams Rhodes steps out. And worst case, if you get a new guy out there too, might not be as aggressive on the outside. So you can take that underneath pass all day. LJ Jones back on the field for Fresno. Would be a 25 yard field goal from here for Boise State. So inside the 10, almost to chip shot territory. Play fake to the end zone, incomplete. L.J. Jones back in the game, and he knocks it away from Matt Miller in the end zone. Their defensive coordinator, Nick Toth, told us he was a fighter, a battler. Here he is. He goes out of the game, comes back in. A little, a little contact there at the top, but nonetheless, a big batted down pass for L.J. Jones. And can they get one more stop and try to hold Boise State to a field goal? Southwick, pressured and sacked at the 15. Chris Peterson is forced to use his final timeout with 11 seconds. Ettering sacks Southwick. 
But the pressure coming from the top of the screen. Watch him jump right over the back. Coming up, he just hurdles him and then continues to pursue it after Southwick. Southwick doesn't even realize, thinks he's protected from the backside and runs right into the pressure. Edro Ettering with a terrific defensive play to get the sack. Thirty two yard attempt coming from Dan Goodale. The junior from. The junior from Boise who famously missed the thirty nine yarder that would have beaten TCU in 2011 that ended the perfect season for Boise State. Chris Peterson is effusive in his praise of Dan Goodell and the way he rallied, improved, mentioned the block in the Washington game. This would be from 32 at the end of the half. Could have waited another four seconds, five seconds to call the timeout to the end the half. Dan Goodhill's 32-yarder is easily good. And the junior from Boise, Goodhill, boots it through. Broncos unable to get in the end zone, but three on the board to make it 24-19. Seven seconds to go in the half. Well, the chase for the cup is here, and it's on to the historically wide open New Hampshire. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at New Hampshire. Coverage begins Sunday, 1 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, your Friday night crew from a sold out Bulldog Stadium in Fresno, California. That's just a nice answer for Boise State going in before halftime. I know they probably are bummed they didn't get a touchdown, but still driving the length of the field, getting a field goal, you know, cutting into that lead a little bit, gaining a little bit of momentum back. And Southwick on that drive showed me some grit, too. Had the nice scramble out of the pocket to get them down into the red zone. Both these quarterbacks, it's a great quarterback duel going right now between Derek Carr and Joe Southwick. Carr hoping for one last chance in the half. Saw him throw it about 65 earlier. Fielded right at the 28. That's a fair catch called for. So from the 28, seven seconds, one timeout. Now, remember I said I didn't know why Chris Peterson didn't wait a little bit longer to kick the field goal? That'll be interesting to see if Derek Carr and Fresno State take a shot at it or they just go to the victory formation and take it in. It looks the way they're lining up, looks like they're just going to take a knee. We told you it'd be a fun one between Boise State and Fresno State. 24-19, Broncos at the half. Mountain West Conference and potential BCS implications in the second half in Fresno. But now we send you back to Chris, Mark, and Jesse. Thank you, Carter. Jesse Palmer and Mark May here with us here at the Halftime Report. And 24-19, the score, maybe... We thought there might be some more points in the first half, but certainly a lot of yards, even though both teams combined for just 97 yards rushing. They did it all through the air, Jesse. We saw a couple of turning points there mm. in the first half that favored Fresno State. I talked about how Joe Southwick would be the key for Boise State, and that was a great two-minute drive. He's made some yep. throws in the first half, but he has to be a better game manager in the second half. There was a costly interception he threw on the 30-yard line, but there's four consecutive plays here. I really think change momentum. Here's a third and 10 from the 30-yard line. You're in field goal range. He's a 50-year senior. He knows he cannot take a sack. That sets up fourth and 16. They want to go for it. you got to throw this away or throw it downfield you take yet another sack give Fresno State great field position and what does Derek Carr do he turns right around and takes advantage of this and throws the ball vertically out of the stack position throws it down the field two plays 62 yards yeah. scores a touchdown they've got the momentum right here take a look nice job of standing tall in the pocket getting the ball down the field to play just like this bang bang they're in field goal position but guess what on the next play press coverage on the outside Josh Harper does a terrific job fighting off the press back shoulder fade touchdown pass he puts it right on the money terrific job of fighting for the football Jesse and bringing it in for the touchdown Those are quarterbacks best friends right there but in this second half Chris Boise State offensively they have to run the football they have to be able to find deep uh, balance and on defense you got to close the middle of the field now how many mm -hmm. explosive plays in the passing game do we see from Fresno State and right. Carr throwing it down the middle of the field Carr 237 yards passing in that first half Southwick 212 yards the it's difference is we said it the interception from Southwick and no turnovers yet for Carr and for Fresno State.
Well, this is a big game tonight, but it isn't the only game we have this week, and not by a long shot. Let's run through the slate quickly of games. California, Derek Carr and the Bulldogs, a five-point edge on Joe Southwick and the Boise State Broncos. Harvest Moon over the San Joaquin Valley. Welcome back to a sold-out Bulldog Stadium. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams on the sideline. Two senior quarterbacks and a good one through the first half. Yeah, two fifth-year senior quarterbacks with a lot of experience under their belt, and it reflects in the stats. I mean, both these guys going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Really, the difference being in Derek Carr has been flawless. Zero interceptions, three touchdowns. Joe Southwick had the one interception that cost his team. And then I just need to see them convert in the red zone. They had a couple opportunities, had to settle for a field goal before the half. But I would expect this to be a fun finish as these quarterbacks go head to head. And a lot of opportunity to see these two quarterbacks. 60 total plays for Boise State in the first half. Do some quick math. That would say they were on pace for 120. Only Louisiana Monroe versus Wake Forest has gone over 100 plays from scrimmage this year so far. Goodale kicks off to Dylan Root. Root's going to bring it out of the end zone. He gets to the 20. Root knocked down at the 22. Now with all the talk about the changes in football in the 21st century, this is a great something that uh, an article of 1968, Chris Brown from Smart Football tweeted out a couple weeks ago. Woody Hayes saying we're now getting plays off every 12 or 13 seconds. We are moving so fast, I frequently can't get a play in from the sidelines. We'll hit 100 <laughs> plays a game soon. That was, was 1968. Prophetic right there. And Boise State on pace for 120. Isaiah Burst. Wunderon Burst knocked down at the 41 on the sweep. Their car held it in the back's belly just long enough to freeze the defensive end who was trying to play both to allow Burst to get the edge. Kong shuttle pass complete to Kazada. Winds up picking up three, maybe four. Fresno State, they like to go fast. They're going even faster. I think that was definitely probably a coaching emphasis at halftime was, hey, let's keep that tempo going at full bore. Burst grabs it at the 40. Lock on the outside. Burst inside the Bronco 35 before Lucar finally forces him out. 20 yards for Isaiah Burst. Derek Carr and the Bulldogs go hurry up. Screen. Kazada. It's maybe a couple. Tyler Horn on the stop. Yeah, Tyler Horn sniffed that out pretty well. Saw the offensive lineman releasing to set up the screen. He was all over it from the get-go. Too, it helps Fresno State. The fact they were able to catch their breath, fresh legs. They come out here. Helps them go faster. Broncos showing pressure. Derek Carr hit as he throws. Incomplete. Nearly picked. He got lit up by number eight, Demarcus Lawrence. One of our impact players hasn't. It's the one thing. It's really tough to get pressure on Derek Carr. He's got a pretty good offensive line, and then he gets rid of the football. Extremely fast makes quick decisions and gets that ball out of his hands and when you've got your opportunity to knock him to the ground You got to take it Third and nine in 
incomplete. Intended for Parker and Ryan Douglas in coverage. It's two throws in a row. That one didn't look like a lot of pressure, but there was a hand up kind of around his arm. It was a little bit distracting. And right as he threw it, we were the fourth and nine. They went for it in the first half, fourth and three from around the same spot in the field. And it's one of those areas. It's just a no man's land. But this is a lot longer distance for them to get. Would be close to a 50 yard field goal. Tough to punt it and keep it out of the end zone. So. Fourth and nine. He could pooch it too. Throwing, complete, converting. The tight end, Marcel Jensen. And a good from Tim DeRay as Carr. And the Bulldogs convert. And I, this is just where Derek Carr gives you an advantage. You see, number 89, Marcel Jensen on the inside, just running a quick post. Carr released it quick. Coach DeRuder loves what he sees right there. And I, I guarantee you, Carter, they had options at the line of scrimmage there for Carr. He saw what he liked, lined it up, and converted. Screen on first and 10 to Devontae Adams. Sophomore from Palo Alto forced out around the 10. High risk, high reward. Go for it on fourth and nine. Get the reward. Now, the question is, what kind of reward do you get from it now? Empty on second and seven, the diamond formation at the top. Carr scrambles inside the five. Carr pushing. We'll see where they mark him down. He is marked down at the one. It's first and goal. Same exact play they ran the last time. They had the quad set outside. Four wide receivers to one side, a single receiver on the other side. Car surveyed both sides. Had the numbers up the middle, took it himself. Car said he didn't like his toughness when he watched himself on film last year versus Boise State. Takes it himself to the one, but before the snap. No play. Prior to the ball being snapped, timeout, Boise State. First charge in the second half. Timeout on the field. First and goal for Derek Carr in Fresno State when we come back. You might ask yourself, why did they call timeout, Boise State? This is why right there, only 10 guys on the field. Coaches on the sideline recognized that. Said, hey, we better get the right amount of guys. That always helps. <laughs> 11 on 11. Give yourself a better chance. Broncos had to use two timeouts for substitution issues on offense in the first half. Timeout used here for that substitution problem with the defense. First and goal. Fresno State. Kazada. Didn't get in. Tough yards on the ground has been a problem for Fresno State. There's no look at Kazada. Trying to work his way. Pretty good job by Blake not Reno for Boise State. Wrapping up. Kazada again on second down. Denied again. This time Kyrie Marshall on the stop. Carter, do you remember first quarter, same type of situation. They got it down there. Remember they had the play that was reviewed. The ball was down on the one-yard line. They have trouble. Teams that predominantly play from the shotgun, they have trouble getting physical and getting those tough yards on the ground. I'd almost prefer to see them do it through the air. I mean, that's what you do. The windows are tighter, but you got a quarterback who's used to, it has got a very strong, accurate arm. Do it through the air. Well, they got the numbers up top. On third and goal to the air. Touchdown. Devontae Adams. The Carr family celebrates, including Little Dallas. <laughs> A 
11th straight game with a touchdown catch for the sophomore from Palo Alto, California. Light recruited Devontae Adams has exploded as a Bulldog. 31-19 Fresno State. Derek Carr, quick release. Devontae Adams, quick route. Boise State didn't even know what happened. The ball was in the end zone for the touchdown. Just as you said, Danny, if you're having trouble getting it there on the ground, why not go to the air? <laughs> so, Daddy Derek Carr to the air. That's his six-week-old son, Dallas' wife, Heather. Proud grandparents, Cheryl and Roger Carr. Derek Carr has been impressive tonight. Good decisions. Nice little screen pass that was slipped up the middle. Poseida took it the distance. And lastly, this big arm and a great catch by Josh Harper. And another one from Harper. Derek Carr is fired up, trying to break the streak of seven losses in a row to Boise State. Four TD passes for the fifth-year senior from Bakersfield. There's a lot of time left in this game, too. I like his chances to get that career high. Colin McGuire's kick. Dallas Burroughs from the five. Burroughs dropped inside the 15. Let's check it with Allison. Well, Carter, in that first half, we saw Boise State make some aggressive calls. They tried for the two-point conversion, came up short, also went for it on fourth down in the second quarter. And I asked Chris Peterson about that, and he said, you know what, we're out here, we're playing to win. And he felt like they had that two-point conversion, just missed a block. Now, as for his quarterback, Joe Southwick, uh, we saw him get hit a lot, sacked three times. He says he's banged up, but he is okay to grind out the second half. And here's Southwick handing off to Jay Ajayi. Maybe three. That was fourth and 16 that yeah. was <laughs> converted the first half. Now, the two point conversion, that's something you see more teams going to where they'll. I don't think that side. was that risky or that, you know, much of a call that would, you know, really raise your eyebrow. But the fourth and 16 was the one to me that was a little bit perplexing. Really could have pinned Fresno State back if they chose to punt it down. Southwick. Tipped. And it's incomplete. Southwick had a dangerous pass. And Southwick, after he... Jay Ajayi goes up and gets it, saves probably an interception. Man, he get crushed by four Fresno State defenders. Tyler Davison got his hand on it. Eight for 13 tonight on third down. Boise State needs a conversion. They need to give their defense a rest. Southwick incomplete, intended for Boldevine with Curtis Riley in coverage. Three and out. Southwick pleading for a pass interference call. There was some contact at the top of that route. Player down for Fresno State, that's Donovan Lewis, the junior from Clovis West High School here in the Fresno area. He's the hybrid outside linebacker position that Fresno State calls the Joker linebacker. Lewis, the junior, down on the ground. Seven to go in the third and step aside. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Lee. Introducing the new Lee Modern Series for men. Designed to look better. Crafted to fit better. And Verizon. Reality check. Verizon's 4G LTE is in more places than any other 4G network. This is the Fresno State Winery. You can get your tailgate red or you can get the President's Reserve Classic Chardonnay. Honoring the 22-year tenure of Fresno State 
President John D. Welty. That's why I couldn't find you yesterday. That's where you were. <laughs> Had to sample through the Estate Chardonnay. <laughs> Lewis on the bench. This is fourth down. Fake complete. Boise State pulls a fake inside their own 10. And Luke Hart takes it all the way to the 48-yard line. Chris Peterson, he told Allison Williams down the sideline at halftime, we came here to win this game. Watch that back, number 28 just slips right through Fresno State's line. What a huge, huge fake for Boise State. I mean, just like it looked like Fresno State was gonna get the ball back with an opportunity to go for the jugular, Boise State captures that momentum right back in their own hands. 30 yards, Harmon to Luke Hart on the fake. On first down, Ajayi stopped. What a call. Fake punt from inside their own tank. Mountain West Conference and potential BCS at large implications with Boise State and Fresno State. And the Broncos on a seven game winning streak over Fresno State. They have won 11 of the last 12, and the Fresno State Bulldogs are tired of hearing about Boise State and the Broncos busting the BCS, <laughs> potentially year in and year out. Third and seven. Southwick pressure. Davison drags him down. Fourth down again for Boise State. Fourth time that Southwick has been sacked tonight. Big Tyler Davison right in the middle. Keeps an eye on Southwick, and that's pretty good pursuit out of the pocket. And Boise State, they went fake the punt the first time. Why not go for it again? He's going to punt it. Pooch punt by Southwick. And a terrific pooch punt. So a fake punt. They bring it out to midfield. And then Southwick pooch punt to pin Fresno State back inside the six. It's a different way of doing special teams. Boise State with daring plays in clutch situations. Boy, it brings to mind a game a few years ago. Yes, it does. The Fiesta Bowl. Well, halfback pass. It's my favorite, the Statue of Liberty. The famous Statue of Liberty. That was in Chris Peterson's first year as head coach. The overtime Fiesta Bowl win over Oklahoma. So some vintage Boise State with the fake punt and the pooch punt to get not only some momentum but also field position back in the Broncos. That was field. huge. I mean, that was a big shift in field position. Now can they get a stop defensively, something they've really struggled with versus Fresno's passing game. Kazana gets it. Been tough running tonight for Fresno State. Just out to the 10. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares about the run game when you can throw it all over the yard? You've got these wideouts they've got on the outside, and Adams, Harper, and Burse. Just every once in a while, wrinkle in a run, just to keep them honest. Two eighty-six through the air tonight for Fresno State. There's Carr in the air. It is tipped, and it's incomplete. Third down coming. Armand Nance got a hand on it. Dante Dion too coming off the edge had a chance to dive for that batted ball Could have been a huge turnover and now this is where Boise State needs to step it up maybe they bring pressure do something to get Derek Carr out of his comfort zone on this third down so I think they're going to drop eight into coverage so Carr over the middle to Devontae Adams is it a fumble or is it incomplete? 
Wow, they're calling it a catch and a fumble. I didn't think he had possession right off the bat. I didn't think so either. It is ruled a catch by Adams and Boise State football. Correa knocked it free from Adams. Here's Adams, catches it. Comes down, is, is that a football move? He has possession. Takes a step or two. And then the ball is knocked loose. Kamale Correa knocks it loose. Brian Douglas recovers. Boise State football, and now the replay officials say they want to have a look. Rolling on the field was and a fumble recovered by the defense. So the replay officials, Jim Blackwood and D. Anderson, will take the look after what is ruled a catch and fumble by Devontae Adams. In slow motion, it looks like he catches it and makes a move and has possession. But when you saw it in real time, when it was played forward, it was like, no way did he have possession. Let's see it again in real time. Now. And just from Devontae Adams' reaction, the receiver, I think, tells you a lot, too, because I don't think he acted like it was a fumble. He didn't really go after the ball that much after the fact. But, man, when you slow it down, it looks like he had two hands on it, had possession, and then the defender knocked it out of his hand. Catches it, tucks it. I mean, he, he catches it and tucks it even more. It happened in a split second, but if you slow it down, it does look like he caught it. This is a critical moment oh, in this football game as Boise State trailing by 12. They were backed up inside their own 20-yard line. The fake punt, the pooch kick, and now they would get a fumble recovery at the Fresno State 15. Trailing by 12 midway through the third. Here's the call. After review, the receiver never had control of the pass. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down and six from the 10-yard line in the middle of the field. Timer, please put seven minutes, eight seconds on the clock. 7.08. Thank you. And when, and when I think our initial reaction was the reaction that was correct, was there was no way he had that ball long enough. When you slow it down in slow motion, you know, it looks like he had it controlled, was able to do it, but... Just real time alone, I think, was what gave that away. So Garrett Swanson will yet again hit it from right at his goal line. Fair catch by Shane Williams Rhodes around the 47. Let's take a look at how Boise State win the extra mile brought to you by Firestone. You go the extra mile when you do things you're not always required to do. How about the punter, Trevor Harvin? He's used to kicking the ball. Not this time. Flips it to his up back. Huge conversion on a fourth and long for Boise State. Then Joe South, the quarterback, used to throwing it. He uses it. He punts it with his legs and pins Fresno State all the way back deep in their own territory. So Big in the field position battle. We haven't seen that in the first half. We saw more of the fireworks offensively. Now a little bit more of the chess match comes into play for these two teams. Baltazar straight ahead on first down. On play number 68 from scrimmage for the Broncos. Baltazar, the true freshman from Chula Vista, California. Broncos playing as many as seven true freshmen this year. Southwick throws the screen high. Kirby Moore holds it in, but L.J. Jones was waiting. L.J. Jones deserves a game ball defensively for Fresno State. He's done an outstanding job in pass coverage and coming up and making big plays in the open field. If you're playing a team that throws a lot of those bubble passes, those short underneath passes, that's a critical component to stopping it. Blitz coming. Southwick. Release. Complete. 
Miller grabs it at the 35, moving the chains. Well, Matt Miller and LJ Jones have had a pretty good battle all night long. That time, Matt Miller got the best of them. He was pretty well covered. Joe Southwick handled that pressure outstanding, stepped up in the pocket, and a nice pass. Play fake. Now Southwick's going to throw it to Kirby Moore. Complete. And that little read option screen yeah, we see up. everywhere. I just cringe a little bit when I see Southwick running the football, knowing the issues he's had with his shoulder in the first half, not wanting him to have to take another hard hit on that. And I don't even think he wanted to run it. He was running towards the line of scrimmage like he was going to run and flipped it out late. That's the backup, Grant Hendrick. This is the freshman running back, Baltazar, across the 25. So Boise State didn't get it on what was initially called a turnover at the 15, but the offense has taken them inside the Fresno State 25. And they hurry up, Baltazar again, right up the middle. And we asked the coaches for Boise State last week about Aaron Baltazar as a freshman, true freshman, you know, what could he handle? And they had all the confidence in the world in him running their entire playbook. And I think you see why they like him. Here he is again through tackles. Deron Smith eventually gets him, but Baltazar falls forward close to the first down, third and very short. Now they bring the big workhorse back in, Jay Ajayi. He was probably loading up on some pickle juice. <laughs> Wildcat look here. Ajayi slips out of a tackle. Ridden out of bounds by L.J. Jones, the fifth-year senior cornerback, forcing fourth down. Jay Ajayi lined up in the Wildcat that time. A great initial penetration from Fresno State initially. And no question here for Boise State. They're going for it on fourth and one. Ajayi has it. Fumble picked up by LJ Jones. Jones made it the game ball now that you advocated, Danny, because he has the football. A takeaway from Boise State as the Broncos were rolling inside the Bulldog 20. Jay Ajayi, who caught one up last week against Air Force. This one on a you gotta secure that football. Just came loose as he was falling to the ground. Fresno defender might have got a big mid on it. Just the ball squirts out from Ajayi. Carl Mickelson, number 43, the defender for Fresno State, might have got a hand on that football to knock it loose. But in that situation, fourth and one, you got to realize you're in a ton of traffic and try to secure that, that rock with two hands. Second straight week, red zone fumble for Jay Ajayi. So the Bulldogs get it back with Derek Carr in the shotgun from the 21. Carr looking deep on first down. Harper, it's dislodged, incomplete. Dylan Lukart knocks it away from Harper. Dylan Lukart was playing that center field position. That ball was in the air a long time where Lukart was just on a dime all the way over there. Was able to break up that pass. And if you're Derek Carr, I think you got to put that ball a little bit more on the line because the longer it's in the air, the longer that defense is reacting to it. Carr incomplete again. Another tough hit. This time it's Brian Douglas. That was in some traffic too. On Greg Watson. Well, tomorrow night, Auburn LSU, a big one early in the SEC West, early in the season, 745 Eastern, presented by Hampton Hotels. Be a fun game. Auburn 3-0, playing with some confidence. LSU kind of flying in the, under the radar a lot of the season. Well, David watching. Here's Derek on third and ten. Pressure. Derek steps up and delivers. Isaiah Burks. David Carr's got to like his little bro on that one. Derek Carr had a little bit of pressure, did a nice job stepping in the pocket right there, setting his feet, 
delivering a strike, a perfect strike to Isaiah Burst. And that was another area. Carr said, hey, I got to do better when there are guys around me stepping up, being more accurate under pressure. Gain of 21. Carr pumps, finds his check down. Kazada to the 50, still picks up eight before Darian Thompson makes a stop. Boise State was close to going in. Down by 12. Fumble by Ajayi. And now the Bulldogs moving it. Delonte Adams inside the Boise State 40. And Fresno State's just winning the matchups on the outside. These are some tough wide receivers. Devontae Adams is the man that time. And Derek Carr pulling the trigger. Extremely accurate tonight. Three twenty-nine through the air for Derek Carr. Give him some more. Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams. You know, I've heard a lot about Derek Carr. You know, the fact that his older brother was a number one overall pick. Heard good things about him. The scouts were here the other day watching a ton of film of Carr. 12 to 13 scouts. Look at Adams trying to walk the tightrope down the sideline. From inside the Bronco, 15. Carr pumps, throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Isaiah Burse. There is a flag down on the play. It's the right guard, number 73. Going low, and then you see the guy right next to him, 56, the center, Lars Bramer, went up high. So the chop block is the combination high low on an engaged defender. That's why a 15-yard penalty. Wipe out the touchdown, back to the 30. Carr sacked at the 32. Bo Martin gets the rare sack on Derek Carr. And what a costly penalty that could turn out to be for Fresno State. Really felt like this drive could be a knockout blow that Fresno State could deliver. But they might yet. Carr pressured again. Finds Adams. Adams shifting inside the 15, but a nice juke move. Before Correa brought him down. Oh, we asked Derek Carr about Devontae Adams. This guy described him as a freak, just a great athlete, a guy who could, you know, leap out of the gym. If you're playing basketball, who can make a lot of moves. And all three of these wide receivers for Fresno State and Burse, Harper, and Adams, really impressive. They're really going to be tough to, tough to stop. again. First man misses, then Corey Bell makes the stop after Moxie missed. Fourth down for Fresno State, and the field goal unit will come on. So a touchdown wiped out by a penalty on the chop block, and now Colin McGuire on for the field goal. 28-yard attempt for the freshman from Austin, Texas. It's good. Jay Ajayi's fumble in the red zone gave Fresno State the football. Bulldogs put up three more.
the Friday night that the Carr family and everybody around Fresno and the San Joaquin Valley has been waiting for. The Bulldogs are 2-0. They got their fifth-year senior quarterback, Derek Carr, in Boise State coming into Bulldog Stadium as Fresno State tries to snap a seven-game losing streak to the Broncos. Mountain West Conference and BCS at large implications on a September Friday night. Dallas Burroughs has a lane. Burroughs drilled at the Bulldog 35. It's the second big return for Burroughs. Setting up Boise State in great field position to try to cut in this lead, but how about the shot he took at the end of that run? Daryl Cash Ooh. delivers the hit. 58 yards on the return. Finds a big crease to the outside right there. Then at the end of this run, watch when he cuts it back in the middle. Damn. Ooh. Mr. Cash, big one. <laughs> so now here's Boise State again at the Fresno State 35. Touchdown, Boise State. The Broncos answer with a kickoff return and a one-play touchdown drive. Bolts on from 35. Not only did they answer, they answered 16 seconds, 17 seconds on the clock. Is all that was run off. First touchdown of Baltazar's Boise State career. And a huge moment, too. They needed that. Goodale, PAT. Eight-point game again. 41 seconds to go in the third. First down, you're thinking, hey, let's just run something conservative. Darren Baltazar, the true freshman, maybe run him up the middle. All of a sudden, he pops through that second level. And there was a lot of green grass to run to. There's Baltazar who took it in for the touchdown and Jay Ajayi, the sophomore who fumbled on his last carry. Saturday night football, split national, eight Eastern, either Michigan versus UConn or Kansas State and Texas presented by Windows. Watching Michigan the first couple weeks of the season, I really was high on them. I was thinking maybe this is the best team in the Big Ten. And against Akron, Devin Gardner threw another pick six. If this team wants to be the best team in the Big Ten, he's got to correct some of those issues he's had turning the ball over. Michigan they, nearly upset by Akron, but we learned last year, didn't we, from Notre Dame yep. to Ohio State. You can it doesn't it. matter. You, it's, as long as you win, as long as you get that W in the win column, you can win ugly. Of course, you got to win some big games against better opponents, too. That was the ultimate kind of trap game for Michigan, too. They had just come off the emotional win against Notre Dame. Dylan Root takes it at the goal line. Bounces outside. Root wrestled down at the 17. Fresno State was scheduled last weekend to go to Boulder, Colorado and play the Colorado Buffaloes, but because of the epic flooding in the Boulder, Colorado area, that game was postponed between Fresno State and Colorado. And Red Cross soliciting donations around Bulldog Stadium before and uh, during tonight's game as Fresno State students raise money to aid the victims of the flooding in Colorado. And Tim DeRuiter says, listen, uh, we would like to play that football game at some point. Don't know if circumstances will allow, but first and foremost, thoughts and donations via the Red Cross to the Boulder, Colorado area. On the football field, Derek Carr completes to Marcel Jensen. In a strictly football sense, that means the Bulldogs' first time on the field in two weeks uh, tonight against Boise State. Yeah, lost the game off their schedule. Did get rested. Chose not to scrimmage, but give their guys a day off. Kazada dropped at the 25 on what will be the final play of the third quarter. So as it should be at Bulldog Stadium, Boise State and Fresno State, we go to the fourth in a tight game.
Tough ticket at Bulldog Stadium. The first sellout crowd in five years, but the Boise State Bronco fans have found a home in the corner. First play of the fourth quarter in an eight-point game. Third down and one for Derek Carr in Fresno State. Kazada picks up that elusive tough yard or two on the ground for Fresno State to move the chance. It's a big drive, too, for Fresno State. I mean, they need to answer Boise State in that quick one-play scoring drive. And think about... Just think about the hurdle that Fresno State is trying to get over. Losing seven straight times. This is what they've worked for. You know, we heard Coach DeRuiter in his pregame speech, you know, talk about the whole offseason working for this. It's a lot of pressure, and this is when it's the toughest to win the game here, going for that knockout blow. Screen off the play fake to the tight end, Jensen. For a first down to the 45. Not only seven straight, but 11 of the last 12. Only the 2005 game here at Bulldog Stadium. Last year, it was 20 to 10 Boise State over Fresno State, but not really even that close. Fresno State scored late to make it 20 to 10. And Devontae and, Adams forced out. And I think it's imperative they go for that Devontae knockout Adams. blow. They, they can't fiddle around and, and not get a touchdown or not get some points because if you're facing the heavyweight champ, which is basically what Boise State is, if you just kind of give them a couple punches, they'll come back and counter you. And perhaps just crossing the 50 on second down. A handoff to Kazada, <laughs> just as we expected. I there. felt you were, <laughs> you were trying to build up something there, weren't you? Yeah, hey, it was a good, good three-yard run. Yeah, set us up for third and one, just like we anticipated. Now, Fresno State, they've got some trick sleeves up there in their arsenal as well, which they haven't shown tonight. Dave Schramm, their offensive coordinator, said they're a lot of situational, but they do carry four or five in there. Watch out for the trick sleeve. Kazada dropped on third and one. Fourth down coming after Bo Martin and Ben Weaver get to Kazada. High, high risk, high reward. That's Tim DeRuiter's motto. You talk about an opportunity to go for the knockout blow. Got to continue this drive. This is an area where they struggle, though, on the ground. I'd rather see it in Derek Carr's hands through the air on the outside. They're two for two on fourth down. Carr in the shotgun. Pooch punt from Derek Carr. A pooch punt battle between <laughs> Derek Carr and Joe Southwick. So 12-32, Boise State trailing by eight. It'll be Bronco football when we come back to Fresno, California. Welcome back, Fresno State continuing to lead Boise State 34 to 26. Now in the third quarter, Jay Ajayi for Boise State fumbled in the red zone. And when he came off the field, he was naturally very frustrated. But with each completion on the ensuing Fresno State drive, he got more and more upset. He wouldn't speak to anybody. The only one he talked to was Aaron Baltazar. And all he said was, I blew it, man. I blew it. It's got to be you now. Now after Baltazar scored that touchdown, the first guy to greet him, Jay Ajayi. Southwick pressure throws and he completes. It's Baltazar who gets it on the check down. Sports Center is coming up next on ESPN. Right now on ESPN 2. A full update on the wild, wild card races in Major League Baseball and more. On second down and eight, this is Baltazar. So Ajayi, after back-to-back -back weeks with red zone fumbles, on the sideline for the second straight series. Third and two, screen complete, Kirby Moore. First down, Boise State. There is a flag down. They, had, they went tempo, they went extremely fast. Fresno State was having trouble getting guys off the field. I believe that's what they're gonna get called for, is 12 men on the field, because they couldn't get everybody off. Legal substitution on the defense, 12 men on the field when the ball is snapped. Penalties declined. First down. Have a look. Wow, this is going to up quick. There's another one in there. There, there, there he is. is. <laughs> you see the confusion. 
Out of the pistol, Baltazar dropped immediately by Carl Mickelson and Kyrie Wilson. Well, that's one of the goals of tempo go so fast that and it worked perfectly and they definitely went at the line of scrimmage extremely fast even faster than normal and Fresno State was caught sleeping. Play fake Southwick complete. Matt Miller makes the grab Mickelson and Riley make the tackle. Southwick has shown me a lot of grit tonight. Eh? The, early on this drive, he looked like he was going to get sacked, fought his way out of it with a guy hanging on him, found his check down. He's playing with a banged up shoulder, doing just enough to keep Boise State very much in this game. Baltazar hit by Mickelson and Smith. He had to take off those couple plays in the first half because of the shoulder. That's the left tackle, Charles Leno Jr. has to come out for a play. Baltazar pushes forward the true freshman who had the last touchdown for Boise State the first of his career and he's now carrying the load with the Johnny on the sideline. On third and two Baltazar falls forward close. He got it. Move the chains, first and 10, Boise State. This will be interesting to watch because Boise State trailing by eight. Remember earlier in the game, they went for the two-point conversion and came up just short. Nico Mata is down for Fresno State. We go back to the two-point conversion. Look, see Matt Miller, the up back, stretching for the end zone, came up just short. We went and looked at it in slow motion. His knee was clearly down before there, but it was one of those ones where I'm not, I'm not quite certain if it was Chris Peterson calling that a call or if it was something by formation when they line up, because they typically do that every time anyway when they're lining up for an extra point. But either way, that missed opportunity has them trailing by eight right now. Broncos down by eight. Went for it on fourth and 16 from inside the Fresno State 40. Then the failed two-point conversion and the Ajayi fumble in the red zone. And then you also have three different timeouts they've had to take, two on offense, one on defense, because of substitution problems. Mata out of the game, first and ten Bronco. With all those miscues here, they're still very much in this game. Southwick takes a pop, heaves it to Miller, makes the grab inside the 25. Carter, I just told you about Southwick's grit, his toughness. This play right here might have been the most impressive of the night. Had a defender barreling down at him, stared him right in there, stick his foot in the ground, and gets blown up right after he threw it in a perfectly placed ball to Matt Miller. Charles Washington leaves the lick on Southwick. Back to the ground, Baltazar. Still pushing forward as Riley makes the stop, but a gain of two, maybe three, forward progress. Baltazar's out, second and seven. Shane Williams roads in the backfield. Now he motions out. Southwick pressured. Looking for help. Throws it downfield, complete. Williams roads inside the 10. Southwick, a little Houdini action. And he's not a guy that's really well known for being a dual threat quarterback, but we did talk to Chris Peterson yesterday, said it's one thing he's really kind of di discovered in his own ability, the ability to make plays outside the pocket. That was outstanding job evading the pressure. Baltazar on first and goal to the four. Kyrie Wilson makes the stop. Jay Ajahi, who after the fumble has not got an opportunity. Last week he did get a shot at redemption. After the fumble they kept kept him in the game but this time Chris Peterson choosing instead to go with a true freshman Aaron Baltazar who's been hammering the middle of his Fresno State defense. Play fake. In 
incomplete. Intended for Boldevine, Curtis Riley in coverage, flag down. Charles Washington is saying pass interference on he me. It was Riley who was locked up with Bull Devine. I wonder if they saw something else. There's the hole right there in the end zone. Not on the receiver that was the intended pass, but the slot receiver. First and goal. Baltazar into the end zone. Touchdown, Boise State. Broncos trailing by two. 8.28 to go. Baltazar's first career touchdowns in the second half with Jay Ajayi on the sideline and Boise State will go for two to tie it with 8.28 to go. It's a situation they requested the ball in the left hash. They can ask where they want to spot it. Very clearly you practice something all week, a two-point play that you repped. Talks Baltazar. Spinning, stretching. He did not get in. Fresno State hangs on to the two-point lead. Tyler Davison and Charles Washington on the stop. Boy, Baltasar really gave it his best effort to try to stretch that ball. Of the end zone, try is no good. Timeout on the field. Baltazar gets the touchdown, but he is denied the two-point conversion. Fresno State still leads it by two. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by AT&T, Rethink Possible, and Lexus, introducing a car designed with one purpose, to stand apart. The all-new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. Here in the San Joaquin Valley, the pistachios are big. Replay booth did take a look at that two-point conversion attempt by Baltazar stretching. We will show you what we saw here in just a moment, but here is angle number one showing Baltazar's knee down. Now, exact same frame, you see that football is just Short. shy of the goal line, and the replay officials say, we certainly don't have the clear look showing that the ball was over the goal line, breaking the plane, to say the two-point conversion was good. Therefore, Fresno State hangs on to a two-point lead. Goodhill's kickoff bounces live ball. Fresno State thinks they have it at the 36. And the officials were so far from that scrum. <laughs> All out fight for the football. Bronco football. State recovers the kickoff. 823 to go. Boise State gets it back. Yeah, I, I don't think that was intentional. I think that was a pooch kick, so they didn't get a big return. I don't think they were trying to get it onside, but it just bounced right in the between a lot of Fresno State defenders. That ball was loose. There's a huge pile of players, and the officials took a while to run from the corners of the field, from the sideline and from the end zone. By the time they got there, the bottom of the pile, Boise State came up with it. Tanner Vallejo credited with the recovery for Boise State, the true freshman and on special teams. So Bronco football, it's Baltazar still in and running back. Third straight series that Jay and Jai has been on the sideline after the red zone fumble.
Southwick in trouble. Scrambles away from the pressure. Southwick inside the 10. Loses the football. He fumbled. Or did he step out? The line judge is saying that he stepped out at the four. The officials are going to have to huddle here because one signified fumble out of bounds. One says Southwick is out inside the five. There's, There's the, foot. the foot out of bounds. Clearly out of bounds. Another look. Still has the ball out of bounds. Ball be marked on the three and a half yard line. Very the runner stepped out of bounds at the three yard line. the ball coming out before that foot touches out of bounds. Close, but I think it'll stay. I, I think he's got the ball there. He's got it. Ball. Foot is out. Dead ball. Foot is out. He's out of bounds. Afterwards, I think it comes out. He's it's, out of bounds. It's going to be very close. If the replay official, and again, we are going back to and the Official ruling view. that the, was made on the field finally was it was out of bounds. So before the right foot there. touches <laughs> is the ball coming loose. Ball's, he's out. He's out of bounds. And then the ball comes loose. Very <laughs> close. And keep in mind, you hear the phrase indisputable video evidence about what a replay official is looking for. The rule book says that to reverse an on-field ruling, the replay official must be convinced beyond all doubt by indisputable video evidence. So, you know, going by the rule book, the replay official, if he has any doubt, the ruling on the field is supposed to stand. So it's up to Jim Blackwood and D. Anderson, and the replay officials always tell us they're looking for a clear picture they want something almost in freeze frame in order to overturn something on the field I think the call is gonna stay I think he's out of bounds at the three And again, that was eventually the ruling on the field when the officials <laughs> huddled. <laughs> Which is important, too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's really critical. Here's the call. After review, ruling on the field stands is called. First and goal on the three-yard line. Now, when the referee says stands is called, that means that there just wasn't right. enough evidence to overturn it. They're going to let it. In any case, it's a huge break for Boise State. Now with a first down from the three-yard line. It ends up being another terrific play by Joe Southwick on the scramble. I've been really impressed with him tonight. What a gritty performance out of a fifth-year senior. First and goal, Boise State. With the Broncos' seven-game winning streak against Fresno State and potential BCS implications. Baltazar takes it inside the one. And Baltazar, the true freshman running back for Boise State, really getting those physical yards up the middle, which is exactly where Ajayi struggled. Southwick pushing. Just short. Touchdown, the call. The headlinesman comes in and says, touchdown, and Boise State takes the lead. I thought Joe Southwood clearly was in. And the official just running down the line of scrimmage, making sure. 19 straight for the Boise State Broncos, charging back in the second half. They'll go for two again. Twice den denied tonight on two-point conversion attempts. Reverse. Miller looking to throw. 
Throw it somewhere. Back to the end zone for a two-point conversion. Miller. Converts for two. Hardy makes the grab. Miller with the two-point toss. And Boise State goes up by six. It's good. Saturday night college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels, Auburn, LSU, 745 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN presented by Hampton Hotels. That's Saturday night. We got a good one on Friday night. What else did you expect between Boise State, Fresno State, with everything on the line? A seven-game Boise State winning streak against the Bulldogs. BCS at large implications. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams from a sold-out Bulldog Stadium. Dylan Root from near the goal line. It's to the 25. There is a flag down. During the return, holding number 10 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty. First stop. This is the first of two potential meetings between Boise State and Fresno State. First year that the Mountain West is divided into two divisions with the championship game on December 7. Preseason poll predicts Boise State to win the Mountain, Fresno State to meet the West, win the West, and a meeting on December 7. So if they do get a rematch, this will be a fun game to watch. And right now, if you're Derek Carr, you're a fifth-year senior, I think you've got to put this team on your back take control in the huddle and say this is everything we work for right here this moment this fourth quarter 21 unanswered from Boise State call to burst bobbled but he makes the catch and gets to the 15 only a couple because of the tackle by Jonathan Moxie Moxie one of the true freshmen playing in the Boise State defense Derek Carr, throwing complete, burst again. Carr goes over 400 passing yards. Four touchdowns for the fifth year senior from Bakersfield. Complete again, dragging Devontae Adams out of bounds near the 43 with older brother David watching Derek Carr trying to rally Fresno State down the field. 6.04 to go. Six-week-old Dallas Carr. He's watching. Dallas is checking out the action. Dallas's grandparent, Sherilyn Roger. Derek. Incomplete, flag down, intended for Harper. That's Jonathan Moxie, the true freshman we just mentioned. Pass interference on a defense number 30. Ball will be played to start the foul. First down. A lot of contact down the field from Moxie, a lot of hand checking. And then at the end, of course, Josh Harper goes to the ground. That's what probably got the flag, the fact the receiver fell down. First and 10, Kazada makes the grab and gets 10 inside the Boise State 35. Not quite 10. Second and short. Burst catches it. He was down 
Ware was burst down, short of the first down for sure. But he lost a couple. Third ball. down and three after Burr slips. The ball was just a hair behind him, which kind of threw Burr off, off balance, couldn't keep his feet. And up with a longer situation here with third and three. Broncos show pressure. Carr flings it complete to the outside. Burr dropped right at the stick. Flag down. Dante Dion made the tackle. Burst right at the first down marker. We check the flag. Upside. Defense number eight. Penalty. That's Demarcus Lawrence. Who had nine and a half sacks a year ago. Yeah, he was one of our impact players. A guy who can pressure the quarterback on the outside. Just a little bit too antsy on the last one. 21 straight points for Boise State. Derek Carr trying to rally Fresno State for the response. Batted away on first down. Come on. That's Jonathan Moxie. How about the true freshman, Jonathan Moxie? Pretty good adjustment to the ball. Carr was trying to throw a back shoulder fade to Devontae Adams. Moxie read it. Nice break on the ball. And a good pass breakup. It's a pretty impressive play from a guy who was playing high school football a year ago. It was called for pass interference on this drive. Carr finds Adams tiptoeing down the sideline. Moxie forced him out again. So Fresno State definitely within field goal range, down by six. They're thinking end zone. Over a thousand yards of combined offense tonight. Batted down. Bo Martin got a hand on it. I'm surprised more people don't try that against Fresno State. You rarely get pressure on Derek Carr. He's been sacked only once in the hundred, twice now on, on hundred and plus, you know, 125, 130 pass attempts. If you can't get to him, get your hands up, try to bat it down like Bo Martin did that time. Even with that incompletion, Carr is six of eight on this drive. Make it seven of nine as he finds Devontae Adams who shakes his way to the 12. And they're just peppering him with a short passing game. Boise State content to give him the short underneath stuff. Don't give him the deep touchdown pass. And this has been an area when Fresno State has got down in the kind of tight red zone, the 10 yard line and in has been where they've struggled to punch it in. First and 10 from just outside the 10. So that yellow line at the two. Adams dropped this one. Just a case right there of Devontae Adams trying to run with it before he caught the football. Realized Jonathan Moxie, the defensive back, was breaking on him. I got the two. I'll take it at the two. So it's second down and 10 after the drop by Adams. Bruce. Diving inside the five. So a third down and short. They can get the first down and get a new set of downs. But again, these tough, short guarded situations, goal line situation, have been where they've struggled on the ground. See if they give it to the fifth year senior, Derek Carr, and continue to try to move, continue this drive through the air. Instead on the ground, Kazana takes it to the one, first and goal, Fresno State. 
Now, as a quarterback, is Fresno State, as an offense, thinking it all about the clock at this point, or is it just get in the end zone? I think they're so close, they got to score, but I think it's definitely something in the back of their mind. They need to try to utilize some of that clock. Let's quickly check in with Allison. Well, guys, Nick Toth, the defensive coordinator, came over to the offensive coordinator and head coach, uh, DeRuder, and said, milk the clock, milk the clock. Their defense has struggled against Boise offensively. So on first and goal, Kazan to the end zone, touchdown. Bulldogs back on top. from being back on top. McGuire now puts the Bulldogs back on top. Two minutes, 14 seconds. What is Boise State's response on the road? for Boise State in the loss to Nevada. Derek Carr leads Fresno State on a 13-play, 85-yard touchdown drive. And the Bulldogs lead by one, 2.14 to go. Will be Boise State football. They have two timeouts. And Dallas Burroughs has been terrific in the return game for the Broncos. So Fresno State kicks it high for Tolley. Will dive across the 31 yard line. So after Burroughs' dangerous returns, Bertoli takes it at the 31. Now Joe Southwick's chance. Almost, it's very familiar to where Boise State got the football before the half, about the same amount of time on the clock. They drove it methodically down. Fresno State was very conservative in that drive. I think Fresno State needs to stay aggressive and go after, get aggressive against Boise State. Try to dictate the game to them. Southwick over the middle to Matt Miller. The reason I say that is these short passes, the two, two minutes is a long time in a two minute drill. You can just chip away, work your way all the way down to the red zone and then kick your field goal and get out of here. Over the middle again, this time Boldevine. First down at the 47. Clock stops temporarily at a minute 44. It's been seven straight losses for Fresno State against Boise State. 11 of the last 12. Southwick hangs on to it. If he wouldn't have tripped, he could have had some yards on the ground. Fresno State still choosing just to rush four guys, drop seven into coverage. Over the middle, there's Miller dragging inside the 50. So it could come down to Dan Goodell. Who they got to get there first. A career long 47. That was versus Washington. He also had one blocked in that opener against Washington. Goodell had the infamous miss against TCU in 2011. And Chris Peterson would love to give his junior kicker a position for a game-winning field goal on the road as part of the redemption of Dan Goodell. It was 21 straight for Boise State to come back and take the lead in the second half at Bulldog Stadium. Very impressive performance by Joe Southwick. A little bit of a controversial call here, but he clearly was out and took it on his own. A 
on the quarterback drive and then the crazy two-point conversion conversion Matt Miller now boys will get two opportunities they have two downs to get this first incomplete incomplete intended for Miller fourth down Mickelson knocks it free, but Miller never possessed it. Fourth and six, it comes down to this at Bulldog Stadium. Nine seconds, eight seconds, seven, the umpire is still hanging on to the football. I mean, it looks like they're trying to get the ball spotted correctly for some reason. That allows Southwick to go back over to the Boise State sideline prior to fourth down and six. So reset the play clock. It's fourth down. They went after Southwick, put pressure on his face. Caused the throw a little bit behind him. Jonathan Norton, number 37, with a big pass breakup. And coach Tim DeRuder loves what he sees. The streak, the seven-year streak, is over. The losing streak comes to an end at Bulldog Stadium tonight. Now the question for Fresno State, how far can the Bulldogs carry it? potentially all the way to the BCS in the final year that we could see an at-large BCS buster. They were in the top 25 in the USA Today poll, checking in 25 this week. I think they'll get in the AP, AP poll as well next week. And this team has a lot of weapons, a fifth-year senior, a quarterback, who knows how to work the offense. This is a team a lot of quality teams wouldn't want to face. The Carr family celebrates. A sold-out Bulldog Stadium celebrates. Snapping the seven-game losing streak to Boise State. For Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, our entire crew, I'm Carter Blackburn. What a Friday night in Fresno. Oh, a Friday night. This is SportsCenter Live. What's up, John Butcher Gosh, Robert Flores. We are live with the very latest Sports Center, but what a game at Bulldog Stadium. Fresno State wins 41 to 40. You just saw it here on ESPN. Yeah, wild finish at Bulldog Stadium. Let's go back out to Carter Blackburn and Danny Cannell, who had the call. Guys. The Bulldogs celebrate. They've got the milk can, and they have snapped a seven-game losing streak to Boise State. Allison Williams on the field with Tim DeRuder. Thank you, Carter. Coach DeRuder, Boise State had won seven straight. You knew what was on the line tonight for your program. How did you guys get it done? We got guys that have heart. We got guys that have heart. They love each other. They trust each other. They trust our coaches. They, they knew we had to make one more play, and, and they, they did. What are the emotions you're feeling right now? I'm sorry? What are the emotions you're feeling right now? I'm just so happy for our guys. You know, seven years, that demon stays in, your, in the back of your mind. 
I talked to these guys. We, we just had to play. We knew it was going to be a game like this. You got to give Boise State credit. I mean, their kids didn't quit. Our kids didn't quit. And we just happened to make one more play. What do you think this win means to your fifth year senior quarterback, Derek Carr? Uh, he's a gamer. I think he's the best quarterback in the country. I really do. I mean, the guy just leads us down the field. He doesn't ever worry about what the situation is. He, he plays nails every every play. Thank you so much, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let, let me get with the guys. Carter. Well, we talked about how it's already been an emotional fifth year, senior year for Derek Carr. The emotions right now are riding very high for him and the rest of the Bulldogs. I tell you what, he picked this team up and put it on his back and carried them to a big win, breaking that seven-year losing streak against the BCS powerhouse of Boise State, the BCS Buster, the team that always went in there and... When they needed it the most, he stepped up in a big way. Derek Carr was impressive all night with the football, distributing around to his many weapons. That's the thing that impressed me. Josh Kazeda, the back from the backfield on the outside. Josh Harper with a great catch. And he spreads it around to all of them on the outside. They're going to be extremely tough for a lot of teams. Derek Carr really impressed me this evening. 460 passing yards, four touchdowns, and Derek Carr is with Allison Williams. Thank you very much, Carter. And Derek, what are the emotions you're feeling right now to finally beat Boise State? And so overjoyed. I, I remember as soon as our DB, I, I, I can't wait to see who knocked that ball down. I hugged my brother, and I told him, man, this one's for you. Because when, when I was sitting right up there, when they lost to him, when they were ranked eighth in the nation, right down there, and I told him that that one was for him. A special night for you, for your family, for this program. Yeah. What does this win potentially mean? Oh, man. I, you know, who knows? You know, whatever God has in store, I'm, I'm down for it. I'm going to praise him whether we win or lose. So uh, I, hopefully we keep winning like this. Uh, hopefully it's not this close, man. My heart gets, it's like a roller coaster, man. It's crazy. But uh, we're so blessed to have this win and uh, can't wait to watch the film and correct it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tr spoken like a true car and a special night for you, the little guy here, um, to have Dallas in the stands after everything you've been through. No way. Yeah. What does that mean to you? It means the world to me. Uh, everything that kid's been through, three surgeries, he's a month and a half years old or years old he's a month and a half and he's a lot tougher than I am I mean golly uh, I cried like a baby for him uh, but I stayed had to stay strong in my faith because we've been blessed he was here tonight so uh, golly yeah I, I can't say much more about it well, he's undefeated at games now yeah 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 he's beat him all the time yeah so, <laughs> thank yeah. you so much thank you so much I appreciate it God bless you guys with Dallas and David and the rest of the Carr family watching Derek leads Fresno State to a 41-40 win over Boise State. Sports Center rolls on.